and welcome back to the Designer Saw Studio. Now, you've already seen the Astin stripped down to its component parts, and we've taken stock of what is good and what is not. So today, we're going to get on with some of the design and fabrication of the physical components of the project. Okay, we're going to have a look at the rear drive now. So, as we said earlier, the car is powered by one gearbox and motor combo, stripped the motor off at this point, um, which sat and drive the wheel. Now, this has a sort of a strange square star profile. That sits into the wheel and simply turns the wheel and away we go. I didn't want to stick with one wheel drive. I wanted to go with a uh, two wheel drive. So I bought two new motor gearbox assemblies off Amazon, uh, which came from China um, eventually. And yeah doesn't fit so um went to cad drew up a new part and we came up with this well first we came up with um that fail print uh that bit of fail print that test piece 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 until we eventually came up with that. We start this process by measuring up both the wheel interface and the motor drive interface. We then make a CAD template. No, not using cardboard aided design, but using a modern thing called computer aided design. Any CAD package will suffice for this bit. And we start off with a 2D representation of the shape. We then extrude and cut material away until we get the shape we require. We then use a slice of software called Cura, which translates the design into a model and program code that the 3D printer can use. The software also shows us a demonstration of how it will print layer by layer. We're using a modified Ender 3 3D printer to print this part in PLA+. You can see more of our 3D printing projects over on the app Designersource social media. Next is on to the printing. This time lapse can be quite deceiving. It shows a not insignificant amount of time. The print itself took approximately nine hours to complete. This um, has that profile on the inside, so that this engages with both that inside edge and the outside edge. I've put in a M12 or a 12 mil bearing um, in the middle. That seats one on the inside, one on the outside. And that just has a really nice snug fit onto that gearbox assembly. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that fit. And then that then, again, is a nice snug fit onto the wheel. And we have drive. And of course, as we said, we don't want one wheel drive. We want two wheel drive. Because I can't resist mocking it up. There it is with the two motors in place. Couple of things that straight away I'm gonna to have to resolve. The old one had these two pins that sort of protrude and they locked onto the body here and here. So we're gonna to have to find an alternative sort of way because currently these will just rotate round. So they need some form of bracket, strap, something or other, just to stop the gearboxes rotating around the axle. Simple solution. Little dog paint on the end of the motor on the mounting little pin slide that on line it up and now we know where we've got to drill I have increased the width of the rear end a little bit so the wheels stick out 
few mil, uh, which is not the problem. Uh, the axle is a little bit short now, so I might need to uh, take a little bit off the bottom of them plastic parts or uh, potentially find a, a longer axle. I'll have to work that out as we go along. But looks a lot better than it did, and we will drive. Do some skids. I hope you consider subscribing and hit that like button. If you uh, want to see more, check out our other videos. We've got build series on all sorts of things, including a conversion of a Volvo T5 into a manual. I hope I'll see you next time. And please look us up on social media. We're at Automotive Tales, or for me personally, at Design Saw on all platforms. Thanks for watching. <laughs>